Good morning, Briggins. Tom Morton here, back in Brigham Outdoors. I got uh, Matt Bruni here. He's another Brigham, <coughs> and today we're going to be talking about the best budget build for land-based shark fishing. Stay tuned. Beep, 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 beep. Let's go to work. Alright Briggins, today we're going to discuss the best budget build for land-based shark fishing and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the hook and work our way up all the way to the reel and we'll briefly talk about everything. Um, if you're curious on how to construct some of this stuff, we'll go over how to do that in later videos. Alright, to begin with, uh, for the hook, we've got a 20 uh, yacht Gamagatsu, uh, but a 20 yacht 20 hook is a good all around, that'll, that'll get your you know, mid to big range sharks. Um, you may you may be able to notice that the barb on this hook is bent backwards. Um, there's a lot of guys that do that. And the reason being is, although obviously the hook isn't gonna stay buried in the shark as well, the benefit to it is it's much easier to release. In order to attach your hook to your rig, um, I recommend using number 19 single strand wire and number 19 single strand wires 400 pound test so obviously that's that's enough in comparison to the rest of your rig and the actual connection point it's called a haywire twist um the the twist on here a little bit loose i did it in haste but uh if you're curious on how to make a haywire twist uh there's tons and tons of videos online very easy to make especially if you have the right tools moving on up past the uh the single strand wire. So as far as the length of your single strand, I recommend uh, no shorter than three foot. And uh, the, the purpose of this strand, if you, if you don't know, is to keep the, the shark's teeth from biting through your rig. So moving up, we get to the top haywire twist, which is attached to a um, 400 pound swivel. Um, you can buy swivels really in any any size that you that you want, I recommend doing 400 pound at at a, at a minimum. You want you know everything. You want everything to be overbuilt for what you're catching. So 400 pound is definitely sufficient. The connection from the wire uh, past the wire past the swivel is now you have your bite leader. Um, this bite leader is made out of 500 pound monofilament. Um, Again, I wouldn't go any lower than 400 pound monofilament. Guys use all the way up to 1200 pound. So basically all you do here is uh, you wrap or you loop the monofilament on itself and you use a crimp um, to secure it. The crimping is pretty easy, especially if you, buy, you know, just do yourself a favor and buy $20 crimps. Um, and the cool thing about the crimps is they, they have preset sizes. So. In the case of 500 pound mono, the diameter is 0.22 millimeters. So what you do is you just use the 0.22 millimeter gauge on your crimps to make your crimps and you know that they're set properly. One thing to note here, you guys can see, I used a, uh, a metal uh, loop protector here. I recommend, you know, you learn things as you go on, but I recommend using nylon instead of metal just because I've noticed that the metal can sometimes dig into the mono and that's, that's definitely something you don't want. The next piece of the puzzle here is your weight. We have the weight attached to a snap swivel. Uh, the weight that I prefer to use are the Gemini weights. Um, you know, you can use really anything uh, that sort of the spider, um, the spider build. Um, I like Gemini the best, so that's that's definitely my go-to weight. And for sizes, the sizes really uh, depend on what size bait you're using. Um, my go-to is the six ounce but they make these Geminis up to the 10 ounce range. Um, the cool thing about the Geminis is by design, they dig into the sand. So when you drop your bait, the, uh, the, the, the spikes on the Gemini will dig in and that helps secure your bait to wherever you're fishing. Um, and you basically, you're gonna wanna increase or decrease the size of your Gemini based on how big your bait is and, and what the current is doing. Um, and then if you guys don't know how these work, 
when you go to set the hook or you get you know you get a run these spikes will fold back in on themselves so you can retrieve easily because the snap swivel attached to the weight really isn't load bearing you can get away with going with something smaller but you know if you're build if you're buying components to build your your rig just go with all the same size there's no there's no issue using a 400 pound swivel and snap here um, you guys may have noticed that the uh, the swivel is on either side of it are some beads the beads serve two purposes um, one they keep the swivel from passing over or around your um, your loop at the end and also the beads they click you know while they're moving in the water so that, you know supposedly they're supposed to mean attracted to your bait um, I would say that the beads are optional um, but most rigs that you'll see that are pre-made that you buy in the stores they have beads on here so I recommend using them as far as length of bite leader we already talked about what size to use but as far as length goes you're gonna want your bite leader to be at least as long as the shark that you're targeting and a lot of guys will go double the length. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're building them. They come in you know, 50 yard, 100 yard, 200 yard spools. So when you're buying your spool, just keep that in mind. It, on casting rigs, you're gonna have to be a little bit more, uh, you're gonna have to go a little bit shorter because obviously you're, you're casting that thing. Usually on, uh, on like the surf casting gear that we use, we're right around six foot. You can maybe get away with a little bit shorter. Um, but like Tom was just saying, if you go any bit longer, then it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass to cast. Moving on up to the, uh, the top of your bite leader. So we have the loop at the top. Again, it's got the metal loop protector on there. I recommend nylon if you can find them. Um, past the loop is the 400 pound swivel. And after the swivel, now you're connected to your top shot. Everybody has their specific knot that they like to use. Uh, what we use for larger diameter lines is the, is the uni knot. Okay, so moving on. So now we have our top shot. I mentioned it was 125 pound monofilament, and beneath the 125 monofil monofilament, we have 130 pound um, braid. Um, you guys are probably noticing that the the senator is on a boat rod. Um, and you probably are aware that boat rods are not really the preferred rod you wanna use for land-based shark fishing. Now, I'll tell you why we're doing it and then um, I'll give you some other options. So the reason why we're using, really the reason why we're using a boat rod over a surf rod in this case is that if you guys have checked out any of our other videos, you've seen that we are using drones to take our baits out. So. The fact that we're using the, the drone means that we don't need to cast um, cast this particular setup. So that being said, we can get away with a shorter rod. And the, the benefit of using a shorter rod is that when you're fighting the fish, a shorter rod gives the fish less, um, less ability to pull to you. So shorter rods, the, the leverage is, is less that you're feeling. So you get a, it's a little bit easier for you to fight the fish. Um, that being said, where the surf rods come into play. Um, and here I'll show you the one that we, that I use typically, and this is the, the pin carnage. Um, and this is a 10 foot, or uh, no, excuse me, a, a 12 foot long rod, 80 pound class. The benefit to using a longer rod is uh, in much greater casting distance. And when your bait is sitting in the water, your longer rod is gonna hold the line you know, off the bottom and out of the waves. Um, so that's that's kind of the pros and cons there for using a surf rod over a boat rod. Um, I'll show you guys. So this particular boat rod, this is one, it's, it's an Ocean Master. You can buy it at Bass Pro. Um, it, again, since this is a budget build, you know, it's not a million dollars. It's, I think I spent 170 on this particular rod, 130 pound class. Um, and let's see if I can show you guys. So at the tip, we've got a roller. The rest of them are conventional um, conventional guides. And then at the very bottom one is a roller. Um, a lot of guys use roller guides for bigger game. Um, the, the roller rods, obviously, they give you, it's a little bit of a benefit when there's a lot of pressure on, on your rod. The thing to keep in mind though, if you go with roller, ro or roller guides rather, is that if they get sand in them, they, they can bind up and then you're kind of losing what you would gain using the roller. So um, 
there's you know different schools of thought with using with using conventional guides versus roller guides. Generally speaking, the bigger gain that you're targeting, you're more the more inclined you will be to use roller guides. Moving down, we'll get to the reel itself. So the reel itself is the 12 uh, Penn Senator. Um, this is the classic. It's the classic. It's uh, well built. It's known for its reliability. Um, it's, you know, I think the design is somewhere around 50 years old. Uh, if, if you're curious, I mean, if you've ever seen the movie Jaws, Captain Quinn is using a Penn Senator and that movie is quite old. So they've been around for a while, but the reason why they've been around for a while and they're still being used is because they're very reliable. So this, this reel, you know, if you drop it in the sand or whatever, it's still going to function. Um, there are better reels out there now, much more advanced with better drag. Um, but for a budget build, and especially if you're just getting into shark fishing, you cannot go wrong with a pen senator. Now, the pen senators come in a variety of sizes, from I think 4 is the lowest. Yeah, I think it just goes, they might, no, I think they have a 3 out, but yeah, I guess pretty much even numbers, 4, 6, 8, and then there is a 10, which is a 12 -0, but it's just more narrow. And But there is like a 9 out, which we'll show you here in a second. Uh, for size comparison, and then it goes all the way up to, I think they make it 20 odd, but it's almost like a custom build, but 16 and 14s are really the biggest ones that you'll see. Yeah. Um, so the, the, basically the construction of the Penn Senator is the same throughout whatever size you choose to buy. The only, the only really real difference is the line capacity. So to give you an idea, the 12 is a pretty common size for land-based shark fishing. And, you know, I mentioned before, I've got a 130 pound test line on here. And with the combination of braid versus mono that I'm using, I have about a thousand yards of line total on here. Um, where you can, you can mess with those numbers is basically if you use more braid and less mono, you're gonna get more capacity because braid is obviously smaller than mono. However, um, things to consider are you know, mono is much more abrasion resistant. So you want to leave yourself enough mono that when you do your drop, your your mono is the one that's in contact with shells, the bottom reefs, and and all that. And that's gonna that's gonna protect your hookup because the you know your whatever fish you're catching is gonna run around. It, it can scrape against any structure that's out there, and that's where you want your mono. Additionally, mono's got some stretch, so it's gonna put less pressure on your reel and its components. Um, in comparison to braid. Uh, the main benefit to braid is it's smaller, no stretch, and so you're gonna be able to get a lot more braid on your reel in, you know, in comparison to your mono. Um, real thing I wanna talk about is the Penn Senator comes, it's, it's an original drag system was made out of, um, Oh man, I, I'm at a loss for the, 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 the material that they use, but it's sort of like a plasticky looking material. Um, and recently, you know, within the last couple of years, there's been an upgrade to the drag system. And, and that's what I have here. It's called the HT100. And basically, instead of using the plastic material, they're using metal washers as well as carbon fiber washers. The, the benefit to those is they're gonna hold up, A, they're more durable and B, their carbon fiber washer is going to hold up a lot more. Um, it, it, you know, it, they, basically they're just more durable. So, carbon fiber is not going to, you know, be subject to wearing down in um, under a long run with you know high heat and everything else. So they're more durable. They give you a little bit more drag. I will tell you that the the drag on the senator is rated at 35, 30, 35 pounds. Um, but with it with the HT one hundred washer upgrade. Uh, we have two of them that we use and we've, you know, attaching them to fishing scales and such, we've we've noticed that it's more like 50 to 60, at least from a stop. So um, that's something to consider. That would probably be the first upgrade I would do uh, if you end up buying this particular reel. Um, if you go on allentanny.com, there is also some custom washer upgrades that'll give you up, you know, to 60 to 70 pounds. Um, so. Just be careful with the, the drag. You can you can definitely overdo a drag. Trust me. If you have a hundred pounds of drag in a reel, you're not gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to hold on to it for very long. So, thirty pounds is sort of the sweet spot that a lot of people consider when catching sharks. But uh, having the capability to go higher 
you know, for a short period of time is going to help you turn those fish. Um, yeah. So one thing to consider when, so if you guys go with the setup that I just showed you, you're going to spend, um, you're probably going to spend around probably $500, but that's with line probably with line and everything else. And that may sound like a lot, but I'm telling you, there's there the newer reels that are out there, the high speed ones that are you know all aluminum or metal construction, and the newer rods and stuff. You you can get you can get into the two three thousand dollar range. So for getting started, there's not another setup that I would that I would recommend. Um, this reel will handle this reel and setup will handle a double digit the double digit shark, and uh, it's your best bet for getting started. Um, for, guys, for a conventional setup. For a conventional setup, absolutely. Uh, obviously, one downfall to these reels, you're not casting them. I mean, if you can't cast a 12-0, good on you. Uh, you've mastered something that I'll never be able to do. Um, so it, it, if you like surf, surf fishing a little bit better than in maybe don't have 500 bucks to throw in your first shark rig, you know, look into some of the spinning setups. Um, you want to do like a little quick comparison just the size. Yeah, so right now, um, this is actually the first conventional setup that I got. I actually bought it off of Steven. Um, it's a Nino, um, very similar uh, as far as specs. Uh, right out of the box, um, drag is I think 20 to 25 pounds. But uh, I did do the, well I didn't, Steven did the upgrade on, uh, on the drag washers as well. And I believe he also put in the sleeve. Um, as well, so right now it's probably sitting around 40, you know, 40 pounds of drag. You start getting down to, you know, a quarter or half a spool, it's going to go up from there. Um, line capacity, as far as that's concerned, the 12 is going to have a significant advantage over the 9 as far as line capacity. I, I'm running a 100 pound braid and a 100 pound uh, mono as well for top shot. I want to say I got about 300 yards of mono, so I got a, probably about 550, 500 yards of uh, 100 pound braid underneath, giving me a total of right around 850 yards. Um, and I'm sure the 12 oh shit, that's probably around, I don't even know, probably. For what I have on yeah, there. Yeah, for what you have on there. So I, I about, you know, I don't have it to the yard, but with the setup that I have with 135, or I'm sorry, with 130 pound braid mono, I'm at around 1,000 yards of capacity. Um, Matt's dropped down to a hundred pound braid in, yeah, mono braid, braid. and he's mono. got about eight fifty. And you can see the the size difference here between the the nine o and the twelve o. There's you know there's a pretty significant difference there. And then you know if you really wanted to go, if you want to get into the two hundred pound um, capacity or the two hundred pound strength, you're gonna want to you're really gonna want to look at a four at a fourteen o or a sixteen o. Um, but these are the things to consider when you're when you're going to select a reel. The I think the 14 and 16 O's are going to be about 100 to 150 dollars more than the the 12 O. But what you're getting out of it is a much higher line capacity. So and the great thing about centers is that, like we said already, they've been around for so long. You don't need to buy them brand new. Um, you know, you you can find them on eBay, Craigslist, wherever, all over the place. I mean, people are constantly selling these things, and um, you know. And they're they're very easy to work on. So you can they got parts for them, upgrades, everything. You know, a lot of guys like buying some of the vintage ones, some of the older ones, and um, and using those. So you know, it's you can get it for a lot cheaper than uh, what you're seeing on Amazon or Pen.com or you know whatever um, you're, you're finding these reels. But you know, nine knot another great option for you know it, it's a it's a solid shark rig. Like uh, we took it down to Florida in our previous video, and this is the one I landed a, a seven foot sandbar with. You know, not a not a huge shark, but you know it's it it handled it. I could this reel could have easily handled probably you know a nine foot sandbar easy. I mean I didn't even have the drag locked down. I maybe had it at half drag, and we you know, I put it on the beach in about twenty minutes, and that was with you know me kind of playing with it, you know just having fun. So at the end of the day, centers are great reels, are reliable. I would refer to them as kind of like. Uh, you know, a Glock or an AK-47 of the shooting world, you know, you can throw it in sand, you can, you know, drop it in salt water, and if you really want to neglect it, not wash it off, you know, you can take it out to the beach the next time, it's going to operate just fine. Um, and, and that's what makes them so reliable and so great, I think, is just because you can uh, you can do those things, take them out on the beach, use them for land-based, uh, you know, shark fishing, and get them all dirty and, you know, messed up and not have an issue with the, uh, the function of them. Um, so Matt brought up a good point with the uh, with the maintenance of these things. Basically, I mean these things are bulletproof. They've been around for years. 
They're tried and true, uh, and which is really why I'm recommending these to you guys who are just getting started. Senator Real, tried and true. It's proven. It's been around for decades. It works. Um, as far as maintenance goes, I'll, I'll tell you that um, I was a little bit intimidated when I first saw it because, you know, I grew up bass fishing and, you know, those reels are much smaller, um, a little bit easier to work on, at least I thought. And then, you know, literally with the first YouTube video, which there's many on how to do, perform maintenance on these reels, I, uh, I, took, I took the 12 volt completely apart, upgraded the drag washers, cleaned all the components. And that's what I want to talk about real quick. So if you guys can see, this is called uh, Cal's Grease. Um, it's a very good maintenance item. It, basically, the components in, in the in the 12 o and the 9 in, in all senators are very simple. Um, all you need to do, you know, periodically, you know, maybe once a season, or it, depending on how much you fish, you take the you take your reel apart, you clean all the gears and everything that's inside with a cloth. Just get all the old gunk and, and uh, grease off there and then re-lube them up with cow's grease and you guys are gonna be sitting pretty for the next time you go out. All right, Brigand, so hope you enjoyed the video. Please let us know down in the comments what else you, you would like to see from us as far as reviews go. It doesn't have to be shark fishing. It could be bass fishing, shark fishing, duck hunting, deer hunting, whatever you guys want. Um, something you guys can look forward to, we've got a lot of requests to do a uh, more in-depth review on how we're using the drones to uh, deliver our baits. So you guys can look forward to that. Also, you guys can look forward to, we have a great uh, white shark fishing trip coming up here pretty soon. So that's gonna be a really cool video, so stay tuned for that. Um, at the end of the last video, we promised to do a giveaway for some fishing line. And uh, you know, we got a huge turnout, like five or 6,000 views. Just kidding. Uh, we got a total of five comments. So rather than use the comment, random comment selector, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go old school. I'm gonna pick some names out of a hat and one lucky winner will win some fishing line from Bullbuster. All right, random selection, random selection. And we got Matt Summers. Matt Summers, congratulations. Uh, you won yourself some fishing line. Uh, Matt is a uh, dear friend of ours and a longtime supporter of the channel. So thank you, Matt. And I uh, hope you'll enjoy your fishing line. All right, guys, as always, stay tuned for more from Brigham Outdoors. See you later.